Yeah, it's, it's just it's just uh, um, what inspired me or what still inspires me. So I couldn't even say it made me doing music generally. As so I, I, these tracks have been with me, uh, yeah, for a long time already. Yeah. And um, as for the first one, it's uh, Georgi Ligeti's Atmospheres. Oh, that's probably uh, many of you know. Uh, Ligeti is, is a very advanced. Um, a musician of this century and he's very much experimenting with sound in general so he uses uh, the orchestra in a different way than it would be in a classical way you know normally Ligeti is, is a very it's very abstract and not what you would expect of the classical uh, you know, century of uh, yeah, classical orchestra music so I'd say so if, if I'd had a few uh, yeah, a few terms to describe his music. It's like very energy charged, flying fast, highly emotional. It has this uh, controlling element. It's uh, very surprising at points and uh, beautiful, harsh, dark, and apocalyptic at the same time. It's goosebumps, really, for me. Uh, every time I listen to this song, it's absolutely, uh, yeah. Oh, it, was, it was very exciting, I'd say. Okay. And the second, the second yeah, uh, tune um, is, is totally different. Uh, it's, you probably know the band uh, LFO. Oh, yeah, definitely. Again, like late 80s. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and there's one particular tune that absolutely smashed it for me and still does. It. I think it's, um, it's, it's never over, really. I mean, this, this stands as a rock. Uh, we are back. You probably know the song. Oh yeah, definitely. You know the first. <laughs> you know that choose. robotic voice. Yeah. Are back. <laughs> That's just uh, genius, I think. Yeah. And there's a couple of things about this song, especially that really caught my attention. It was definitely that robotic ness about it. Yeah. I mean, I was into techno music. That's how I started yeah. uh, in the early '90s. Uh, just dabbling around with a couple of synths and or keyboards. I didn't even have I didn't even have uh, synths at the time. I just I had a Casio keyboard. I think yeah. at that time I was just playing around and uh, yeah. But when that that song really grabbed me because it had that chord uh, figure here yeah, with a major uh, no, it was a minor chord changing into a major chord within one sequence and I thought wow that's that's really genius that's absolutely good and it's uh, incorporated everything I really liked uh, of uh, techno music back in the days it was very techy it was very yeah technical in a way yeah and uh, it infected me it just it inspired me to do something myself as well and I still love it I, mean, I started, started playing the piano since I was six, so and I never really stopped. So uh, I had a um, classical education from, from the age of six on. So that, that was maybe my first encounter. But I made lots of noises, if I remember right, <laughs> already when I was a child. So yeah, just just imitating cars and uh, imitating airplanes and all that. So so that was really I was always doing that. So. Lots of noises and, and then the music, yeah, the piano music. Of course. It's very important in regards to reading notes and uh, understanding music. It's, it's, it's really, it's absolutely necessary, I think, even in these times for um, uh, producers or for someone that wants to make music, he has to understand the music properly.
most important thing for me was uh, once I listened to certain radio shows, or I was very much into rap music, funny enough, uh, in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, and yeah, I wasn't sure. really digging too deep. I was just picking up what was on the radio at that time, and and um, but then I got into more into techno music in the early 90s. That was when uh, Rave Satellite played was uh, started, you know, yeah. uh, with Marusha. You probably remember, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, probably remember it, or some of, some of you out there oh, will yeah. definitely remember the show. It was a two hours radio show uh, every Saturday and it was so inspiring for me to listen to those tunes and my wish was or my, my intention was to bring that feeling of the radio show to my own uh, desk so to speak, yeah? To, yeah, to buy some equipment and to start dabbling in uh, electronic, making electronic music, you know, That's, that was, was really my, my aim to just yeah, kind of replic replicate my own vision of that, you know. So not do a radio show necessarily, but uh, to uh, to do music to start with electronic music. But yeah, that's how it started in the early nineties, and just buying some stuff, saving up for a keyboard or for an Atari ST, and uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, so a small sam sampler, and, and uh, you know. So that's that's how it all started, and I just recorded it on cassette. Back yeah. in the days, I remember, I still have them, the tapes, so still lying around. I was really into those uh, acid, uh, house, uh, whatever, acid, techno uh, tracks. Uh, the technicality of it really caught yeah. my attention and, um, um, yeah, and it's, it's always been dance music. It's, I don't know how, that, how it actually happened, but it... Yeah, that's that's what I was into back in the days, and I used to go to clubs as well, the Bunker Club in Berlin, yeah. and the uh, E-Werk in Berlin as well. That was in the early '90s, and that's probably that left the strongest impression. Hard base dealers. to this radio show like every um, two weeks and played out new tunes that yeah. I did just with a friend of mine at home and um, then Don Q records, the Don Q records uh, leader, he was invited to this radio show and he listened to my music and then he, that's, and we got in touch and he liked my music and that's where I had my first release on Don Q records yeah. back in 97. Uh, and that's how I got in touch with Position Chrome later on, and that's how it all started. A bit later, I started playing shows then. But it's, it's always been my own stuff, so I never, I never considered myself being a DJ, really. Okay, I yeah. never uh, had too many. Uh, I think I own four vinyls <laughs> <laughs> that, that are not mine, <laughs> I have to say, because the other ones, yeah, of course, I've got them as well. Um, no, I started playing with um, several mini disc recorders and uh, <laughs> just, uh, um, yeah, I had no real uh, yeah, machine sync yeah. uh, play mode. Uh, I just had to, had to do it by my own, by, by just p pressing the pause and play uh, yeah, <laughs> buttons. Sure. And that's how I started really, playing my own stuff. I don't do it intentionally, it just happens because I have, I have so many tunes to, to play out that I there's no more space for any other tunes really. <laughs> it's a communication thing, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's actually nice to have a, a vibe building up and then you know, it's like a bit of uh, question and answering, you know, it's just like you put something out and you get something back and yeah. it's, a, it's a form of... Uh, I think it's, 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 it's a form of non-verbal uh, communication that is, I think, in some regards, much deeper than any uh, normal conversation, really, you know? 
And because then you know, ah, oh, yeah, that's that, that works out that way. And then if I play that, and this as so, so it's really interesting to see the response. And of course, it's fun. Yeah, you, that's what an artist wants. He has, has to go out there and let the people know what he's doing and what he's saying by his music. Or, yeah, have do an exhibition if you're an artist, a painter, yeah, then, then you want to do exhibitions because you have to communicate with the outside world, yeah. Whereas when you just produce, you're mostly on your own, you know, you're just sitting in your room, <laughs> the door's shut, and then there's no communication going on, you know, you don't do it for yourself. I mean, at least for me, I, I know guys that do it that way, they won't go out and, and show anyone, but I think it's, it's fun it's, it's, and it's necessary as well. My music used to be much more head music, I call it. Yeah, so back in the days, so if you listen to Frequency Hunt, it's very, very heady music. So you sit down, you listen to it carefully, you listen to it 10 times, 20 times, and you will always discover something new. Yeah. And um, nowadays, it's more about the vibe, I think. It's more about the heart, it's more about the stomach. Yeah, so yeah. to speak, yeah. Is it, is it really something you would dance to? Is it something that kills it on the dance floor? And, and I don't know why, but it, it moved into that direction. I'm quite happy about it. Yeah. You've seen people move away from the usual style, yeah, usual, whatever that means, and uh, move into a different type of vibe or different type of genre. Yeah. But I think that's necessary, that makes a producer as well, that just shows a different face every time, you know? I mean, it's important. Hard base dealers! Hard base. And for me, and now it's time, I will put out an album and in a couple of months, two or three months on subsistence. Yeah. Stay on this planet, that's the name. Uh, and that's going to be uh, nearly everything. This is going to be neurofunk, technoid uh, sound, like very technical on the baseline synth and stuff, yeah. And that's what I love it, really. and that's... Process, you know. Yeah. Every producer goes through different yeah, time zones, so to speak. And if he only stays at one in one corner, then I wouldn't say he's, he's an honest to himself. Yeah, at least that goes for me. I mean, once you've said it, you only need a couple of tunes, maybe an album, just to, to make a statement, I think. And then it's maybe time to move on or to move to another area and then come back to say some, something more, you know, something that relates to exactly 2013. The name is, is going to stay on this planet and it's going to be an 11 tracks album. Um, and there's going to be vinyl, uh, partly vinyl as well, and there's going to be uh, a digi bonus as well. And um, yeah, this is, this is going to be yeah, very exciting. I think it's, I personally, if I'm looking back, it's probably one of the more important albums, um, if not the most important album probably, uh, that I put out. And, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about it. And also, there's going to be tunes on um, the sick music. Yeah. And I'm looking to collapse uh, with uh, Cause for Concern. Yeah. I'm going to do some stuff with them. I, mean, it's, I just met them a couple of months ago in Berlin here. Very nice guy. Yeah. 